All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm Will Bridges from your team here at Trade House Funds, and we've got a lot of market updates. You know, FOMC was this week. We're looking at deflation in places like, uh, well, Switzerland and also in China, going to have big impacts on a few instruments. We're going to talk about that in today's session. I'm going to go through the economic calendar first so we can, you know, maybe cherry pick a couple of instruments and figure out what we want to, well, what we expect to move. And then we can go. Think about managing some risk after that. Uh, but let's go ahead and get the show on the road. First things first, got to show you the risk disclaimer. What this says in so many words is that if you put your money or your capital or whatever you want to call it in the market, you're putting your money at risk. You have to risk it to get the biscuit. There is no such thing as a guaranteed trade or a guaranteed investment, no matter how smart the guy sounds. So let's keep on moving here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the, uh, actually, let's do the calendar here first and I'm gonna go over to my favorite Forex factory and and looking at this week you know we had a lot going on basically Bullock came out and told everybody you know central bank digital currencies are real um, it's gonna bring more stability to the system that's essentially what the message is there uh, they're also not afraid you know they're not afraid of falling behind in the inflation race is basically what she came out and said which Whatever that means. Uh, but, you know, everything in Forex and currencies is all relative. So, you know, if there's a lot of inflation here, there might be a lot more over here type of situation. So it seems like Australia is in a little bit of a power position also because they might have, let's just say they've got another percent below where New Zealand is right now. So New Zealand has been holding for a long time. Aussies just raised a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but so I am looking for strength in the Australian dollar and I have been for a while um, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that the Chinese are deflationary and they are stimulating their economy. So the Chinese are going to increase spending. Obviously, that's going to have an effect on places where they buy things from. So if they stimulate in China, they buy more iron ore or whatever it is from Australia. You get the point. They're going to create more inflation and Australia is going to be able to hold higher for longer, I think. And that's why they were less aggressive on the jump. And that's why they were able to raise more recently. I think that was kind of a buzzer beater type of move they made. Uh, and, but now the, the GBP claimant count change, uh, people that are unemployed, better than expected. You know, that's good news, but I would say not a big market mover as far as uh, the UK goes. Um, it is good news. Don't, I don't want to downplay that. Uh, CPIs in the USA, relatively flat compared to where they have been, which basically means that inflation is not getting worse. It is semi under control. Uh, they can still hold rates, but they're probably going to have to lower them. There was a FOMC conference. Jerome Powell was pretty soft compared to how he has been for uh, quite a long period of time. So it is nice to see uh, that the Federal Reserve is starting to soften up. We've got really the producer price index is really the one that I think is the biggest indicator. That's the leader. You know, if the producers are not increasing their costs, then, well, there's no cost to pass on to consumers. So uh, that is flat and uh, in some cases negative. Uh, and GBP, or GBP, so I, I did skip over this, but in the UK, they've got negative negative GDP. So this is all going to be, that a lot of that played into the weakness of things like oil, for example. Um, any Anytime that major economies have negative GDP or they're recessionary or they're flat or whatever, then they're using less energy. That's It's just a fact. Uh, well, maybe not a fact. There's no always. <laughs> but that said... Uh, federal funds rate did not change here in USA. Uh, GDP in New Zealand also negative. Okay, so I'm really interested in the Aussie New Zealand right now. That one's been sideways for the last decade, and I think it's ready. I think it's poised. Okay, in the in the words of David Hunter, you know, I think it's poised for a big move upward, and um, I've been bullish on that one for a while. Um, and we'll definitely take a look at that one in this session here. Swiss franc, they, they held rates. Okay, they're deflationary holding rates. They have, they've had negative rates for a long time, and they're up right now. Basically, it seems like a power play in my mind because the Swiss, you know, they're a neutral country. And if there's a war in Europe and you're a bank and you're afraid for the euro or whatever it is, or you're anywhere, maybe you are in Russia and you want to save your money in Switzerland to protect yourself from the ruble, whatever it is, okay? The Swiss are a place that will take anybody because they're neutral, okay? So the point is, uh, I think that there will be a lot more Swiss franc strength, and they're also going to have a big impact on gold as well. So, you know, realistically, if they're going to hold gold, people are going to buy gold from the Swiss. 
If the franc gets more expensive, gold might come with it. And I think for a considerable period of time until, you know, war ends in the Middle East and maybe also in Europe and Ukraine. So that said, um, it does seem like a good time uh, to get into the Swiss franc. And it has been, I think, for really most of the last year or so or longer. And a lot of people are looking at gold for the same reason. Uh, this, the uh, NPC official bank rate votes, uh, there is more votes. They did change. Let's look at the news here. Okay, so you can look at this here. Uh, bank rate maintained at 525. Let's just go ahead and click on this because then there might be some cool stuff. When the Fed hold rates, USD weak. When Bank of England hold rates, GBP strong. Okay, so they're holding rates in a different situation. Okay, a lot of what that is. So the GBP, I think I'm, let's just say, not bullish on uh, because they held rates and that would look strong because the economy is not doing well. So they still held them anyways. Uh, it basically shows a lack of care for the state of the economy as it pertains, uh, well, as a whole, as it pertains to inflation. Because the central banks, really, their mandate is to control inflation. It seems like the uh, Bank of England kind of showed us that here uh, recently, which is always fun to see. And I don't think people necessarily uh, pay attention to that, but that's really why the central bank is separate. And the real the real reason why they do that is really to control the government. And that's the reason why they're separated to begin with. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Everybody's got their own theories on why the central banking system exists. Some of them are a little bit different than others, but that is what it is. Okay, so let's keep on moving. So I'm going to be interested in looking at the pound as far as some weakness. This pound Swiss pair might be a fun one we're going to take a look at. Um, obviously we're going to look at gold. I'm going to look at oil. Uh, we're going to look at a lot of things in here today. Uh, but you know, obviously in Europe, they didn't hike rates. They held rates. Everybody held rates. It was the, you know, the hold rates week, you know, everybody's doing it. Okay. So, uh, we also saw downturn in global economy numbers as far as GDP goes. So it might be, you know, one of the last times for them to all hold rates together for a while. And, you know, otherwise, we had this ECB press conference, more talking Chinese industrial production way up. Okay. So that might be a lot to do with why oil is recovered because if China is producing more, more energy, you guys get the idea. Uh, very straightforward on that one. As far as manufacturing uh, and services, PMIs in France and Germany, those were bad as they have been for a long time. Really uh, interesting to see that the Euro increases in that situation Oh, because it is harder to come by the euro, I guess, uh, when manufacturing and services are down. Uh, it does make the money more expensive. Uh, and also, the, the thing to pay attention to right now, the DAX, the German 40, is incredibly high. And we had posted a, uh, a potential resistance level. You know, I want to say it was around just under 17,000. And uh, we did hit it. And it's been interesting to watch it since. I did go all the way to 17,000. It was a catch-up trade, 17,002, 17,003 on the German 40. So uh, really interesting to see that this week uh, while they've got these flash services PMIs coming in hotter than expected, uh, which is, you know, it could be a reason why that happened. Actually, this is the GBP I'm looking at. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm just looking at Germany is just above that. So, you know, another why did that happen type of situation maybe. Uh, but either way, I am looking at a, at a situation where I might want to trade the Euro Swiss. I want to trade a lot of things against the Swiss. And really, the unsung hero on this list might be uh, really that we're going to see a lot of movement in the dollar. Okay, so if there's going to be a lot of movement in the dollar, I might want to take a look at the yen. Let's go look at some stuff. Okay, we're going to go get over to the charts. And we're going to get into a few different things if we can. As many as we can in, in, in the next, you know, 30, 40. And uh, pretty excited to put this one out here. I think, uh, you know, we got the pound Swiss open already. We might as well just take a look-see. And this one looks like it's poised. Looks like it's poised. Okay, so let's come to the month chart first. I want the whole world in my hands, folks. I'm going to crunch this down. And, you know, in looking at this for the last, you know, long time since the dot-com bubble burst, this has been a downtrend and an excessively, you know, more downtrend. It's been more and more down. Uh, so that being said, we're getting lower lows here, lower highs. I mean, there's really no reason for me to think anything but down on this one. So I'm going to use my magic ABCD tool here in Smart Trader. We've already 
experienced a breakout. We had a small retracement. It looks like the 236 here. And it looks like we could extend further. We could end up at this 0.98526 price. And that is a solid, you know, thousand pips away from where we are right now. Okay, so if things continue on the trend they are right now, that's really where I'm going to put a breadcrumb. And this is not where I'm going to trade today. Okay, this is just what I'm looking at. Okay, yeah, just where I'm looking. And, you know, there's no gospel in the world, obviously. But, you know, if it's fallen, I don't know, 20,000 pips in the last 20 years, what's the odds it could do another 1,000 pips in a year? Hmm. I don't know. A lot of people look at stuff like this and they say it's really low. It has to come up. Nothing has to do anything. If there's anything I've learned about as far as trading goes, nothing has to do anything. <laughs> there's absolutely no reason uh, why this ever has to do anything. Okay, so I did move down to the weekly. My Fibonacci's adjusted, and this is still my breakout range, and I've still got the same price. So let's keep moving our way down. Okay, so let's come down to the day chart. And this is a situation we're looking at deflation. That means that the value of the Swiss franc is going up. Okay, so prices are falling. Okay, in Switzerland, prices are falling there because their money is getting more expensive because more people, more countries are putting money into Switzerland to just keep it there, to be safe. Okay, to protect themselves from currency risk in whatever country they might be in. And that could be somewhere in the Middle East. It could be somewhere in Europe. It could be anywhere else, okay? This has been a thing for a long time. I am not a revolutionary man for saying any of these things. Um, you know, nor is, I think, a secret. So uh, now what we're looking at, this is a, the day chart. And I think a little bit more relevant to current time. We've been sideways for a long time. We've got this extension that looks like it just barely got hit here. Maybe did we miss that? Let's scrunch this up here. We may have. It does look like we just missed it. But I'm going to go ahead and draw one on here anyways. Manual-like. There we go. And right now, we're at this beautiful 618 retracement level. And really, I don't want to trade all the way down to 98 cents on this one. I don't think that's necessary. I think what really makes the most sense in my brain is just to try to trade this range that we're living in while we make these... Well, we've got a we've got a high, a little bit of a double top here, and we've got a lower high. Okay, so just because it made a run up for a couple of days doesn't mean that I'm going to change my outlook that I should have had for the last 20 years. And this is this is literally just the day chart. So, you know, if I'm looking at something on this one, I'll just give you guys an idea. This might be what I'm looking for. I'm going to go ahead and just draw a few lines on here, and I'm just pasting these on here. I'll change the colors and all that fun stuff. But, you know, really, this is a consolidation move in my in my brain. Make one of these blue. Okay. And I don't know. Some, some people like to trade with a stop loss. Some don't. That's up to you. A lot of different methods that people might use. You might have one out, outside here and enter this 50 times. Totally up to you. I'm not here to tell you guys how to trade. I'm really just Trying to find volatility with you guys. So let's keep on moving here. I think this pound Swiss is going to be hot. Um, and really, in my mind, uh, probably one of the best opportunities out there is just a sh little short trade here. Uh, but those of you watching the recording are probably uh, maybe a little bit out of this game at this point. Uh, because well, let's just say we're going to be at 110, uh, 16 pretty quickly if this does develop like I anticipate it to. Uh, so let's keep on moving here. Uh, let's get over to, I want to show this Aussie New Zealand. And I have been very bullish here for quite some time. It does look like we're getting a little bit of a downstroke, which if you're bullish is a good sign if you want to trade stuff. Uh, so I'm going to come to the, actually, let's start off, start from the top. Let's go all the way to the month. And we'll look at gold here after we get done with this Aussie New Zealand. Um, and this one is fun, you know, because it's been 10 years that this has gone sideways. And typically, if something goes sideways for a long time, like it did last time, you know, this is pretty sideways, you know, a little bit, you know, biased upward here for, I don't know, what is that? Seven, eight years. And then it broke out really big. Okay. And that's what I think is coming on this Aussie New Zealand primarily. And right now it could be the time. I mean, we're getting negative GDP numbers in New Zealand. Australia just raised rates more recently than anybody else out there. And we've also got some pretty telling, you know, technical analysis signs to look at. You know, and really this was the uh, the original trend that happened a long time ago. If you look all the way up top, 
I'm just following these two candles all the way up at the, up at the top. This is where we broke out. This is our higher high on the right side of our trend. It took a very long time to get there. And you know, some of you might also be looking at, you know, the range that's existed. This has been a thing, okay, for a long time. And this has been something one of my favorite things to trade since I got into trading because it's been this sideways shock move since I got into trading. This has been an absolute pleasure to trade in my mind. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you is really just this little move here. You guys see this? You guys see that? Okay, that, that looks like an uptrend in my book, and it has been for, you know, really the last three, four years. So in looking at this, we've re most recently created a higher high. And what I want to find is how far might this thing go. And this is really one of my favorite trades out there right now. I don't know if anybody's making this call right now. I know that everybody's focused on the Australia, New Zealand dollar. <laughs> uh, maybe not. I don't know. Those are the Forex traders in the, in the room, people watch, that watch this. Then that's probably how, uh, how you might operate. Um, this is one of my favorites, has been for a long time. But I would say anybody that's not trading FX pairs, well, maybe you want to after watching this because I think uh, this one's been really fun. And you get tons of leverage in Forex. I mean, you can kind of do whatever you want uh, from a risk management standpoint. Um, when I say do whatever you want, I mean, depending on what you're trying to accomplish, obviously. <laughs> if you're bad at managing risk, then you're probably not a professional trader. <laughs> but this is kind of what I'm looking at here. I'm, I'm expecting big moves here. And obviously, there's going to be a lot of opportunity to do a lot of things in between. Uh, but I want to keep on moving here. Let's get over to gold. Gold has been really hot lately. Uh, let's go to XAU, USD. The miners have been at really low prices also. So anybody that's into miners and that kind of stuff, definitely uh, definitely been hot. I want to say Barrick Gold has been, been very hot and I think will continue to be very hot. This is not advice, just an idea. <laughs> so let's go to the uh, month. This is basically... Uh, well, we'll call it most of the data. People have been trading gold a lot longer than it's been denominated in dollars, and certainly before 1990. Okay, so in looking at this here, uh, you know, we're at the high time frame. We're going to just melt this thing down. You like that pun I used there? I'm big on puns. Uh, my wife hates it, but I'm a big fan. But anyways, I, maybe she doesn't hate it. I think she's, uh, she, she may get a little surprised by it, I think, more often than not. But she's been ripping them on me lately as far as, well, man, that sounded bad. I'm talking about puns still. <laughs> but we're looking at gold. Okay, price demand, price supply, both aimed up. Okay, so I'm not in a situation where I'm going to be necessarily bearish. I had been. Okay, I'll be, I'll be totally upfront with that. I had been bearish on this for quite some time. And really, this is what our inner trend has. Okay, so this big formation we've got right here. Okay, you guys see this? big formation. Let's go ahead and just draw this thing. I'm going to draw this so that you guys can see the same thing I'm looking at. And the way patterns are talked about in trading is that the bigger the pattern, the bigger the expectation of the move. Okay. So this is a king's crown. Okay. That's a big one. Okay. And we just had, we just broke the neck on it. Anybody that's ever traded a head and shoulders pattern or any of this stuff knows what I'm talking about. Okay. So the other cool thing that I'm going to point out is that there's another one right back here. Okay. If you go back to 2007, 2008, I guess, is when this formed. Okay, we're going to come down here. I'm going to make this left hip. Okay, this is another one right here. Okay, you guys see this? Okay, I didn't I didn't get them to the 100%. Okay, I was, I, maybe I could have been prettier about this. But either way, you guys get the point. Okay, this is a much, much larger pattern that we're looking at over here. And the move that happened... You know, previously, with a much smaller money supply than we have right now, okay, we'll just say when we broke out, which would have been about here, okay, over the over the course of this time period that's in this box, and I'm just going to move this box over. We'll just make another one, actually. Let's just make a, uh, let's just copy this box. Let's just paste another one. It's the same size, all the fun stuff, okay? So this is, once we broke out here, okay, I think 2,800 is in play. Hold on, where do we go? There we go. I, I might have uh, I might have to move my chart before I can paste this on here because we're looking at high prices here, folks. Okay, and this is something that you know a lot of people don't think is possible to come up to the twenty eight hundred area, and you know it's probably not going to happen in a day. But the truth of the matter is, if we start to lower rates, okay, and 
we're if we lower rates while the Swiss maintain high rates and you know generally that's going to have a big effect on gold same thing goes with China China's got their deflationary as well I mean, they're, uh, it's, it's really kind of a situation where we could see a really big run. This could go even higher than what I'm showing here. Obviously, the U.S. government, Federal Reserve, that's probably not what they want. And that's what the manipulators didn't want back here, too. Okay, so I got to go with really what the chart says at this point. There is no gospel in the world, okay, other than the fact that this has been moving up since the dawn of time. And the money supply is much bigger than it was, you know, four or five years ago. And, you know, there was a run up leading into this bullish crown here also. And there was on near recovery. Okay. So all those things already happened. This could just be the continuation of trend and, you know, not necessarily something that could mean the end of the world. Gold at $2,800 means it's still valued in dollars. Okay. So I think big up here and I have, you know, really kind of been uh, in different camps as time has gone on here. But, you know, as this plays out, and it really starts to look a lot like it has in the past, then it's hard to ignore the, the opportunity that could be coming in commodities. Uh, we might have a big move up here. Our next target might be at 2202. And, you know, that's another catch up trade, you know, just to bust 2200 would be a big move for gold. A lot of people would be excited about that, myself included. Short term, uh, we still have some prices we may come back here and test around this uh, 2012 price. Fun, fun. That's what the uh, that golden ratio number is right now, 2012. <laughs> but let's keep on moving here. So I'm going to be bullish on gold overall. Uh, that does not necessarily mean at this exact moment. Uh, but that said, let's get moving to oil. Okay. And I, I really thought oil would recover sooner than it has, but it does look like it may be time for oil to get a little bit of a kick up. And a lot of this could be well, let's just say war uses a lot of oil. GDP is not is not low here in USA, and the Chinese are stimulating. They're increasing industrial production. They're making more stuff. They're shipping more things to people like, well, American people like me. And, you know, that's really just a, uh, you know, truth of the world. Uh, but that said, there's no reason why this can't come lower. I just don't think it happens yet. I think we are on push sideways territory as it stands right now because we've got this big fall that's been happening for the last couple of months. But, you know, overall, you know, I'll just give you guys my overall outlook here. Uh, this has really kind of been was, was the trend for quite some time. And then we had the covid crisis down here where we get, where we went negative, which is crazy. Um, but, you know, that said. We've been up pretty much since then and we're still in range. OK, so this is not something that we've changed from an up to a downtrend, at least not in the long time frame. So if I come down to the lower one, we might break that. Might be might be a different tune. Oh, maybe not. So, where might our next you know heavy level be that we might test? The seventy six level might be pretty solid. I'm gonna put a uh, breadcrumb for myself on that one. That looks like it already has been a battle at that level. So it wouldn't be crazy for us to go sideways and bust out at seventy six. Let's come down to the day. And it does look like there's a lot of interest at that price. You know, there's lots of turnarounds here. So uh, we did recently get a fresh higher high here on oil. And, you know, so really mid 70s is probably a place where I might want to aim here in the near future as far as oil goes. And let's keep on rolling here. We might as well take a look at silver while we're on this kick here. Let's go ahead and clear this out. Let's go to the month. And we're on the high time frame now, looking at it all. And similar pattern here that we have on gold. And, you know, really, this is kind of what I'm looking at here, this big jolt up that happened. I'll, I'll just circle this for you guys. It's the same thing that I just did on gold and really the same kind of time period. It's just actually a little bit, a little bit after and kind of a different shape. But that said, this is what I'm looking at. And I think there is going to be a similar move that happens on this right side over here. And I think it can be bigger. I think it can be a lot bigger. There's traders out there talking about, you know, $800 silver. I don't think so. You know, there, I think there's too much paper right now for that sort of thing to be possible. But hey, look, I'm just a guy, okay? And anything can happen. 
So if you look at this here, this is, you know, a four times move or three times, I should say, three X move. Okay, so three X from here, you're talking about 60s, 70s. This can get very high. And just to take a look at, you know, the FIB levels, we'll use our magic smart trader tool and we'll click all the way over here at the bottom. We'll work our way over maybe. Let's see if we can find a better one. Let's sit a, uh, let's see if we can get a good one here. Oh, we lost trend. Guess we're sideways at prices that low. Let's come down here. Let's just get a good low here. Let's go actually to the higher time frame. There we go. The higher time frame seems to be a lot more a lot more fun than that uh, the smaller time frame for what I was trying to do at least. So we did bounce off our blue zone here. We're still in consolidation territory all the way up at 32. 315 and we haven't hit that price in quite some time so i think really this is the next proving ground for us to get out of the consolidation zone and that's nine dollars away so i'm very bullish here on silver for the same reasons that i am on gold and i think that should probably be apparent so let's keep on moving here usd jpy i think is another hot ticket and uh we're going to come to the dollar swiss once i get done with that one and i'm just going to keep rolling through these I think uh, we don't need to be necessarily on the year chart on the dollar yen. Let's clear this out. And the dollar yen has been really interesting. I think a lot of people were, uh, well, 150, 151 was kind of the uh, the proving ground up on this dollar yen. I'm going to zoom out here so you guys can see. Uh, but generally, there's a lot more data that exists. This has been as high as 350 to 1. So this is not a high price per se, but that does mean that this is a downtrend. Okay, so the JPY, they can't print enough to soften the JPY. <laughs> so uh, we are getting a powerful down move for the last couple of, you know, six weeks, I should say. Uh, the last six weeks. So we're on a massive, massive uptrend. Okay, this is a massive uptrend. I want to preface with that. Has been you know, for over a decade, as far as the dollar yen goes, does that, does that mean that it has to go up forever? No. Okay. But let's see where it is. Let's check out the waves. Okay. And you know, sometimes this goes real smooth, like it does, did right there. Okay. So we've already hit our three, eight, two. We haven't hit this five Oh level where we go from yellow to green here. And the reality is, is that a lot of people thought that was an impactful price for some reason. Okay. The market's turned around here many times, okay, many times, and it's really where a push has come to shove, okay, and we missed that target as it pertains to on the way up. You know, when we broke out here, we kind of missed this on this downstroke. We didn't get all the way there. So it wouldn't be surprising for the market to want to come back and test that so some big player can maybe get out of the market or whatever it is, somebody that forgot to buy or whatever it is. You know, I think that's what, it, what the joke is in trading. Uh, but really, that's all the way down in the 120s, you know, 125. So I think there's a lot of action available on this dollar yen and something that I'm going to be looking forward to trading here for quite some time. And the other interesting part to look at, you know, this trend line will be a strong one to play here. And we are in test territory right now. OK, so there is really big opportunity um, if this thing breaks out south. We're talking thousands of pips just to come and test this level. Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe not, you know. <laughs> use a stop loss people all right so let's keep on rolling let's talk about as many of these as we can uh usd chf okay so i don't want the uh video editor guy to hate me uh, but this dollar swiss i think is an interesting play i'm going to go through this one relatively quickly because you guys just saw me do that one um and actually the pound swiss earlier let's go to uh the month you know i'll show this this is a downtrend has been for a while I think we're all on the same page already with this one. Okay. And, you know, just because it's been down doesn't mean it's got to come up. And that's something that it's a truth that people need to learn. Okay. So this is a counter trend. I just tra I just drew against the trend that we broke. Okay. So we're making breakouts to the downside. Okay. Lower lows. Okay. Lower highs are happening as well. We've got one, two of them in the last, well, in the last year, this is the month chart. Okay. So this is a big deal. And obviously, you guys know where I stand. I think that they're going to have to lower rates in the U.S. I think that the Swiss are deflationary. <laughs> so I think the Swiss are going to be strong, okay, for a lot of reasons. And uh, I think I've enumerated many of them while we're here. Uh, 
but that said, I think this can come a long way and, you know, I, I'd be hard pressed to figure out where it might end. Uh, let's actually come back to the month and see if we can get that range there. We did. Beautiful. Beautiful. So this breakout would be epic should it actually occur. Let's go ahead and uh, draw another one over here. Perfect. It found it for me. Just didn't want to. But this is a you know, very shallow retrace here uh, on, the, on the Swiss franc. So next big level down here below is at 82 cents. That's 300 pips away or so. So I think a big opportunity to be bearish on the dollar Swiss. And uh, we've covered the dollar Swiss. Let's look at Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin has been a big deal to a lot of people here lately. And it's definitely broken out. I think uh, we didn't get that little baby retrace. That's a missed target there that I do think we come back to. I think Bitcoin is, uh, is as it starts to grow, is getting a lot of attention from the U.S. government and the SEC and really anybody with a brain. Um, and, you know, it does seem like the government wants to, wants to slow it down. And what that might do, even if it's not going to happen, okay, what that might do is it might get some institutional buyers spooked. So that's really what they're trying to do right now. In my opinion, okay, this is an opinion, Okay, is they're trying to spook them. And that's why this doesn't just go straight up. Because as soon as it does, you know, the government gets scared. And for, you know, obvious reasons, it's a competitor to the U.S. dollar. If you're trying to eliminate U.S. dollars from circulation and get around paying taxes in the USA for purchasing or doing anything, then they're going to want to figure out a way to stop you. And that's just the fact of life. Okay, so... Tax evasion is what they're going to come after you for, and that's always been the game. We are at the extension point right now, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a quick fib level. And, you know, maybe, you know, this thing might actually be done all the way down here at 40,000 as far as as far as the retest goes. I do think that it is, you know, destined for higher highs. Uh, and, you know, really it remains to be seen, but I do think lower prices are coming. I think these 32,000 levels wouldn't be crazy to see because it's only been a few months since they happened. So uh, that said, I think this is more of a January move than anything else. This could surge even higher. We could get a little bit more of a blow off top here. To Even that 48,000 price could happen. Okay, so there's a lot that can happen in Bitcoin. This is one of the more volatile instruments in existence ever you know we're talking prices in the 40 thousands <laughs> so and it's you know up 25 percent in the last three months so yes this thing moves okay um, i am going to remain bullish here until there's a sign to be bearish so let's come down to uh the week that doesn't mean you can't trade against the trend you know some people like to do that i did kind of call a top here um with that fib level uh, but you know everybody's going to be different this actually might not be where you're aiming. This might actually have been the top here. We've already got a new level, okay? And this is stuff that you can't always see from just one time frame. but this was our 236 extension and we haven't made it there yet. So this is 46,742 could be where this thing finally peters out and that's really where I might wanna start shorting this thing if I'm gonna do that. It's gonna be at 46,742 is probably where I'm gonna start looking to do that. Uh, but, you know, anybody is uh, anybody's welcome to think what they want. Uh, the market's going to decide for us. Lots of fun, fun, fun until daddy takes the T-bird away. But I think I am, uh, I think I am running out of gas here as far as, as far as symbols go. There's no reason to trade everything on earth. Uh, we did look at the, uh, let's, look, let's take a look at the, the euro pound maybe very sideways, which would be interesting. The euro Swiss is one that I didn't look at, that I did say I do want to look at. And the euro Aussie might be a fun one as well. So let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, and let's go to the high time frame. And these are called lower highs. And, you know, the cool part is, is we're getting them down here as well. This is an inner trend. That's a lower high there. Okay, so this is a, a trend that is happening. Okay, especially since we've got lower lows that have formed here as well. So let's go ahead and draw that. Okay, so this is kind of the channel of life that we've been living in here on the Euro Aussie for you know a short period of time, but long enough. Okay, and there are some very, very big missed targets here. And like I said, I think I'm looking for strength in the Aussie. This could be the level that we end up at all the way down here, 3,000 pips away. What a 
what an amazing opportunity that would be if it gets there. You know, we don't need to aim that far, though. You know, the, the situation is a little bit less dire that I need to get, to get 3,000 pips on one trade. So the next big impactful level I'm thinking is this 1598. Okay, so just below 160. Okay, so another catch up trade for those of you that are into that. So let's keep on moving here. Get a breadcrumb for ourselves. And this is really a consolidation move that I'd be looking here down to 160. That's a 300 pip opportunity. And, you know, heck, why not? You know, there's a, uh, there's a lot of reasons to believe that money might move from the euro into the Swiss. Move it down. You get the point. But this isn't even a breakout. Okay, this is a sideways trade. we got a lower high here, lower low. So I'm pretty happy about that one. I think that one's going to be solid. The Pound Aussie is another one that might be in a similar situation. Uh, but otherwise, I do appreciate everyone taking the time, spending a, you know, a few minutes looking at you know, a lot of things on the internet. Uh, but again, my name is Will Bridges from your team here at Trade House Funds. And we've got lots of opportunity trading up to $250,000 accounts. So if you are interested in getting trader funding, then by all means, check out the website, get some more information there. Otherwise, have a great weekend and be good or be good at it, folks. Take care.